Okay, so I wanted to make this video as a follow-up to the video that I, I created for a standard drink. We talked about the alcohol, the impact on the body. So in that video, I had mentioned that I was going to share information about uh, drugs and the impact on the body. So before I do that, and I hate this part because I don't like when people do it to me and they start giving you their resume on how wonderful they are and all this other stuff. So that is far from what I'm trying to do here. However, there are approximately 670,000 full-time law enforcement officers in the, in, in the entire country. Uh, I was a California Highway Patrol officer for 16 years. So during my time as a California Highway Patrol officer, I was what, what was known as a drug recognition expert, DRE. So out of those 670,000 plus full-time law enforcement officers, there's less than 1% that are certified as drug recognition experts. 1%, about 8,000 out of that, that total number. So the information I'm gonna share with you is gleaned from my experience during that time. So it's not just, I'm not just Googling it or something like that. All right, so let me do this. Let me share my screen with you because I want to take you through it. Let's take you through it. And so first things first, uh, we are going to make sure that you have this uh, information available to you that is critically important if you are a parent or if you are an employer for you to have this awareness and things to look for. So drugs, everybody knows about drugs. And, but what you probably don't know is that there are only seven drug categories, seven drug categories. And there's an acronym that we can use uh, to describe them. So it's called CHIPS DN. So C-H-I-P-S-D-N. And I do have them separated. So cannabis, hallucinogens, inhalants, PCP, phencyclidine, stimulants, depressants, and narcotics. So the top is separated from the bottom for a reason. And when I say this, I don't want you to assume that it means every single person on the planet. So never say never, never say always. But the majority of human beings, they will fall into these categories. So just, just put it out like that. So anything above this line is going to elevate your blood pressure, your pulse, and uh, dilate your pupils. Everything below the line typically will constrict your pupils, lower your blood pressure, and lower your pulse. So what is a normal blood pressure and pulse? So normal blood pressure, you can see it here on the screen. Uh, the top end, 90 to 120. The bottom end, 60 to 80, normal pulse rate is between 60 and 100 beats per minute. And then normal pupil size. If you have direct light applied to your pupil, they're gonna constrict, they're supposed to. So you'll be between two and four millimeters. And in darkness, between four and eight millimeters. Are you still with me? Because here we go, strap in. All right, so cannabis, let's start with the top. Cannabis. Uh, happy smoke. We, we already know what this is. So this is what's going to happen. It's going to elevate your, your blood pressure, elevate your pulse. It's going to dilate your pupils. It's going to make them super red. If you've ever been in, around anybody that has been um, partaking in that, you already know this part about it. Uh, you're going to have something called rebound dilation. Rebound dilation is not exclusive to marijuana use, but it is very typical of marijuana use. And what I mean by that is that if you introduce light to someone's pupil, instead of it constricting all the way, every time that person's heart beats, it's going to actually bounce. And every with every heartbeat, it's going to kind of bounce and bounce and not constrict. So that's called rebound dilation. The other thing that you're going to get with marijuana use is something called lack of convergence. For the simplest way to describe this is you cannot cross your eyes. Regardless of what you do, you, you can't cross your eyes. It's just going to bounce out. You, can, you don't have the ability to cross your eyes. Of course, you're gonna have the thick coating on your throat and you're gonna have reduced reaction time. Once again, we know that. Uh, so, you know, you're gonna be in front of the refrigerator as well. So, AKA, uh, Mary Jane, pot, ganja, weed, reefer, kush, chronic, buds, blunt, herb, grass, you know the deal. So let's move on. Hallucinogens. So hallucinogens, once again, elevate BP, pulse, Dilate your pupils. You're going to have respiratory distress, hard time breathing. Uh, you're going to sweat. Uh, you're going to have muscle spasms, uh, numbness in your arms and legs, nausea, 
and you're going to be aggressive. Once again, not everybody, but typically people are going to fall into this category. So let's get some AKAs going here. Acid, Shroom, Special K, Mask, Morning Glory Seeds, Clarity, E-Bomb, Molly. You know about Molly, people in high school and college. Scooby-Doo Snacks, Happy Pills. Those are hallucinogens. Inhalants. Once again, elevated BP, pulse, dilated pupils, drunk appearance. So this right here, uh, let's just say keyboard cleaner as an example. If people are inhaling keyboard cleaner, they are literally going to have the appearance of someone being drunk. Uh, loss of appetite, uh, sores around their mouth. Typically, that's how they get it in through their nose and their mouth when they're inhaling something. There's going to be increased anxiety. They're going to be lethargic and severe mood swings, severe mood swings. So laughing gas, snappers, bold, rush, whippets, pearls, poppers, amys, buzz bomb, hippie crack, quicksilver, huffing, aroma of men, and so on. PCP, pencyclidine, they used to call these horse tranquilizers back in the day. Uh, elevated BP, elevated pulse, elevated pupils, stuttering, loss of appetite, numbness, Paranoia, psychosis. Think about this. This is not made for the human body. Uh, and then people get superhuman strength. I have personally experienced this where um, they also people run around naked because their body is so hot. So look out for the warning signs there. So angel dust, butt naked for a reason. I just told you people run around naked. Dust, purple rain, rocket fuel, stardust, water, wet, yellow fever, zombie, and so on. Stimulants. So this is the last one that is above the line. So these are the things that are going to elevate things. So elevate your blood pressure, pulse, pupils. You're going to have twitching and you're going to be jittery. So you've heard the term someone tweaking. So this is where that came from. Loss of appetite, uh, skin issues. Typically, people that are using these type of drugs, hygiene is not their top priority. Uh, impulsive behavior, aggressive uh, uppers, big C, blow, bump, crack, kryptonite, rocks, sugar block, chalk, no dose, crack, meth, crystal, rocket fuel, caffeine, yep, coffee, Adderall, Tylenol, Sudafed, Roids, Jim Candy, juice. So you think about why can't we buy certain things uh, over the counter anymore? Well, this is why people use some of these drugs to make other things. And that's why you have to get it from the pharmacist from behind the counter. All right, depressants. Uh, so decreased blood pressure, decreased pulse, uh, constricted pupils. There are some exceptions. Alcohol, soma, which is a muscle relaxer, and quaaludes will dilate your pupils, just so you know. Uh, lower inhibitions. Once again, we already know that people that drink alcohol, they do things they would not normally do if they were sober. A uh, divided attention impairment. Basically, you can't do two things at one time. You are so hyper-focused on one task that other tasks are very difficult to do at the same time. You will never see a golfer with divided attention impairment. A lack of coordination, slurred speech, aggression. So alcohol, blue angels, green frog, pink ladies, rainbows, red, strawberries, busters, ludes, wait, ludes, barbies, tranks, and tooties, and so on. Narcotics. Now, this is where the rubber meets the road because most people, even if they're on prescription medication for pain, they're going to fall into this category right here. So once again, decreased blood pressure, pulse, and constricted pupils, poor hygiene. This is no joke, by the way. If someone is addicted to uh, heroin or anything like that, the last thing they're thinking about is their hygiene. Uh, scabs, sores, puncture wounds. Uh, I don't want to get into too graphic about it, but there are people that do something called speedballing where they mix cocaine and heroin at the same time. It causes severe skin burns. In fact, it will look like a, a cigarette burn, like someone took a cigarette and, and put it, tried to put it out on your arm. Uh, poor motor skills, irritability, uh, digestive issues with nausea and vomiting, especially if they are between uh, usage. Uh, so, and of course they'll be aggressive. So Vicodin, Demerol, Codeine, Fentanyl, that's the new big thing, value that. Methadone, morphine, oxycodone, Percocet, heroin, tramadol, and suboxin. So these things are in that narcotics category. A lot of these, most people are very familiar with. 
So that's why we got to be super careful when we're using prescription medications and it could lead to severe addiction when they try to get you off of it. All right, so why is, is heroin so addictive? So let's talk about why heroin itself is so addictive. And it's because of neuroreceptors, neuroreceptors, and these are in the brain, right? And in your body, so dopamine. So this is a healthy person, a healthy person not using heroin or anything else like that or an addictive narcotic. This is what it looks like. This is what your receptor looks like, fully loaded, fully loaded. This is what it looks like when someone is on heroin. So you're going to have this space right here with dopamine, but the remainder, the balance of that space that was normally healthy with dopamine, that neuroreceptor is now going to be filled with the, the heroin. By the way, when you use certain drugs, it's going to metabolize into something else. Heroin, when you use it, it metabolizes into morphine. You've heard of that before, especially if you've been uh, admitted to a hospital and you have some pain. So now why is it addictive? That's the real question here. So when you're between use, between use, the dopamine neuroreceptor is like this, but there's no heroin because it's down. It doesn't replenish itself. It takes time. It takes treatment. It takes supervised treatment in order to get this person back to a normal state. That void right there causes an overwhelming urge to fill it. And that is why it is so addictive. So hopefully this was helpful. Take care.